Transition Awareness Breathing. Feeling grounded for both children and parents is essential for healthy living and learning. Join Earth Apollo on this series for tips and tools for creating a harmonious environment for learning. Transition Awareness Breathing will help you and your child find an individualized path to tackle change, promote lifelong learning, and discover new approaches to calmness. The weather was gray. It brought back pleasant memories from my childhood. Wintertime, the sky was full of heavy gray clouds. I could smell the snow in the clouds. It was going to be a good day. But this day was the day of my children's childhood. And so I reminisced. I told my children, this is what it was like when I was your age. The clouds were gray. Almost three months, four months out of the year. So when we had to run errands, it didn't stop me. We could go run on errands and then come back. No big deal. There weren't many cars on the road. Ah, I thought to myself, I have the experience. I grew up in cold. I worked in cold. I didn't shy away from cold weather. It was all right. And it was an opportunity to show my children how you can live and appreciate the brisk, cold winter day. We got in the car. By the time we reached our destination, stores were beginning to close. We're going to close, they told us. We want to get home before the weather gets bad. Okay. Okay, guys, I told my children. Let's hurry up, get what we need, and get back home. It was getting around 4 o'clock, and I understood that in this part of the country, cold weather was a big deal. They didn't have the snow removal equipment. They didn't have the ice removal equipment. So we needed to get back home. When we got close to the street where we lived, I recognized the roads were getting icy. And my little car, the tires were beginning to spin on the ice. Have you ever done that before, spinning on ice? When I was little, my brother and I thought it was kind of fun. I realized that my children are not northern children. They're not from the Midwest. So it wasn't as fun as I thought they would think it would be. Are we going to be okay? Are we going to be okay? We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Finally, I got the car to move and we turned down a side street. You know, We can learn a lot just from our different experiences. And we can talk about all the different types of mindfulness and meditation and relaxation breathing. But life offers us circumstances where we really have to put what we teach about into play. And that's what I would like to share with you on this podcast. A situation, a real life situation that happened in our not too past winter. And as I thought about it, I recognized so many lessons that I learned and what I 
used as far as transition awareness breathing was concerned, how I used it in that situation that I would like to share with you. But before I go any further, I really would like to thank Web Talk Radio for allowing me to have a platform to bring Transition Awareness Breathing podcasts to you. And I would like to thank Mary Lou and Sam, my producers, for making Transition Awareness Breathing podcast available to you wherever you are at, in your car, at the gym, in your office, at your home. Let's get started. So on this cold, wintry day, lessons that I reflected on was one thing about transition awareness breathing that I really, really like to emphasize is a growth mindset. And I, I like to bring the growth mindset not so much in the classroom, but into real life, because life is a classroom, so to speak. I began to drive my little car up the hill, and the tires were spinning. Not one moment at that time did I think I couldn't make it. Of course I could make it. And at the first hill, I did get up the hill. I did kind of a turning this way to the right, turning that way to the left, and the car began to swerve and fishtail up this hill. And I turned left down a path, uh, a uh, side street. Well, when we got through the side street, my daughter um, brought to my attention, but there's another hill. Yes, I thought, the other hill. And I thought, no problem, we'll make it up there. And I thought, really I did, because I got the experience. Well, that hill was very steep, but never did I think I couldn't make it. My little car, it started to go up, but midway, the tire started to spin. I turned the wheels to the right. The car spun to the right. I turned the wheels to the left. The car spun to the right. And I thought, okay, maybe this might be a little bit more challenging. And I stopped and I thought. And my children were beginning to get stressed. And I said, we'll make it. Don't worry. They were not at all listening to what my words were saying. They were watching my actions. And so I realized, wait a minute. Okay, so let me assess the situation. I opened the door that my car was stopped and the road was black ice. I could put my foot down and it was sheer ice. I closed the door and I thought, okay, plan B. I had to park the car. We weren't not going to be able to make up this hill yet. At this time, my car did not have the equipment to make up the hill. It will make it up the hill, but not right now. And it's a different mindset than saying, we can't do it. We can't do it right now. So here's the plan B. I had to roll the car back, allow it to roll back into a parking lot. Well, that was very, very scary for my children because they had never seen this before. Everyone was being careful. Every driver was being careful. Finally, I made it into the parking lot. And my children said, well, what now? And I said, we're going to walk home. We weren't that far away from home. It would have been a beautiful summer walk if the weather was bright and sunny. But it wasn't bright and sunny. It was dark. The clouds were dark and gray. 
and the sun was setting, and the wind was a little bit chilly. For me, it felt like a winter walk. For my children, it was stressful. So I have to recognize my audience. Just because my experience is, I had the experience to walk in this weather, I had to recognize that this was their first time. And as much as I wanted to, I wanted to make it positive for them. So just thinking about and talking about the negative, it's cold, it's rainy, we have to walk home, um, to emphasize that and to continue to think about how um, this was unusual, I just didn't want to go there. I, so I said, we're going to walk home, we don't live too far. And everybody, we had a few things, everybody had to carry something. So I wanted everyone to participate so we could all feel like we were helping. So the walk home, we had to walk. It was windy, it was cold, and the challenge was to be positive. Now, my daughter is is a little older, and so she did pretty well. She did very, very good, actually, um, in the process. My little son, you know, he's not used to the cold weather. His hands were getting colder. And so I said, let's count. Let's count to 150. And so we counted. That way, we were not only busy with our hands, we were busy with our minds. Because if we continued to think about the coldness, it would just get colder. So we counted. And then we sang a song. I asked, what kind of song do you want to sing? And he wanted to sing one of these positive songs that we sing in our Transition Awareness Breathing class that I do with the children. And do you know, when we finished singing that song, we were right outside the gate of our community. The time went by so fast. So the first thing that we did in review is in a growth mindset, we think about, okay, so maybe I cannot get up this hill yet. It doesn't mean I can't get up the hill eventually, but not right now. I don't have the equipment. So we're going to park the car and we're going to come back and get that car. And we're going to go up that hill, but not yet. The next thing is when there is a cold and unusual circumstances to keep our mind positive, to think positive, even if we have to sing a positive song, even if we have to just distract our minds and just count. But one thing that we must do is we must keep on moving. Stopping was not an option. As we walked home, the beauty of the trees with snow on the branches was so beautiful. And it was really a photo opportunity. But if we continue to focus on the negative, we really miss the beauty of where we're at. And that's the third point, is to appreciate the beauty in the circumstances, even in the cold. If you think positive, and that's grasping something positive, even a positive song, you can find something good about where you're at. It's about getting the mind out of that negative, uncomfortable um, position. We finally got home. The house was warm. We were all safe. So the fourth point is being thankful. Being thankful for what we have. Being thankful that we had 
warm clothes, warm shoes, and that we walked, but we weren't really that far away. It was an inconvenience. It was uncomfortable, but we were thankful that we were home. And the final part of putting this transition awareness breathing really into action was to be creative, to be creative in our thinking as we walked and as uncomfortable as it was to think of ways to bring ourselves to calm. If I would have not been calm, the situation would have been much more stressful. And so when we're in a situation that people are depending on us, it is so important to bring ourselves to calm. And when we're in our safe, warm place, it's important to not only be thankful for what we have, but also to be thankful for each other. And so later on that evening, we, we talked about, okay, we, we went, what we went through was different, and I can know it was stressful for you. Let's talk about it. And so we talked about it. We debriefed what was scary, and we talked about um, what things we could have done in my daughter course that we shouldn't have let in the first place and one thing that we all realized is that you know we all work together and that was very very important that we did it we overcame the stress of an unusual situation and a part of this is, you know, during this process, um, I did not do any relaxation breathing. Uh, what I did do was bring myself to calm and realizing an awareness of not just myself that, oh, I have this experience, because at that time it really wasn't important, is that what I realized is my awareness is that I was with two other individuals that did not have the experience. And what they really needed from me was my calmness. They didn't need me to reminisce of my experience of when I lived in the cold weather. What they needed from me was a calmness, a plan, a direction to help get us back home safely. And when we got home safely, and as I shared with you on earlier podcast, I'm um, going through a uh, successful eating uh, plan, a change in my life, and, and I'm really continuing to progress in my uh, lifetime uh, change as far as my eating pattern is I refuse to emotionally eat. Uh, eating something outside of my plan because of a situation that was unusual. Um, why? Because for me, eating emotionally is not going to help the situation. And so what would help is reflecting and talking. But emotional eating doesn't help solve the problem. It would add to a problem and create new challenges. I hope that this podcast, you found it helpful that in times to come, 
some points that might be helpful in overcoming challenging situations when you are the experienced one and you have to lead uh, your family or someone at work through unusual circumstances. What they need from you is the calmness. And your experience will help you develop the strategies. Thank you for joining me in Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast. Have a great day. Be sure and pick up a copy of Eartha's new book, Tab Mindfulness, Awareness and Coloring Activities in a Pandemic World. It's not just an ordinary coloring book. It features 23 illustrations to stimulate thought, relaxation, and creativity for anyone between the ages of 4 and 94. Increase your positive self-talk energy. Unlock new creative paths. Transform your time once or twice a week to create beautiful art while strengthening confidence, building positive self-talk, and sensitize self-awareness. Tab Mindfulness, awareness and coloring activities in a pandemic world. It's available now at Amazon.com.